G'day, it's Gus Warland here from Gotcha for Life and Triple M. I'd love to invite you along to the Mental Fitness Gym. Go to the mentalfitnessgym.org. That is a place where you can pick up some exercises to build your mental fitness, to work on that emotional muscle, those muscles in your head that are so powerful. Please come and join us at the mentalfitnessgym.org for all that stuff to build your emotional muscle and your mental fitness. The Paracave Podcast. Proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Paramount Leash Club, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BTZD Clothing, and the official media partner of the Paracay podcast, The Parramatta Times. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world famous Paracave. And joining me once again on the podcast for a NRLW round wrap is Kiana Takarangi. And it was round four in the NRLW. How are you going, Kiana? I'm good, thanks, Troy. Thanks for having me back on. No, not a problem. Got a great response from the listeners from last week's uh, round wrap-up, so happy to have you back this week as well. And we're getting into the sort of, I guess, the middle of the season at the moment. Uh, we We had, again, another five games, and it kicked off with the Broncos taking on the Raiders. Now, Myself and yourself didn't catch much of the Saturday action, but um, yep. the Broncos, um, Ali Brigginshaw, her kicking game was pretty influential, and Julia Robinson got a double as well. And one of her tries in the corner, she just jumped from uh, a few metres out, and then she got one of the length of the field tries from an intercept. So what did you make of that game if you caught any of it? Yeah, you're right. Um I, I did see those couple of tries by Julia Robbo. She's actually one of three girls in the Bronx team that got a double in that game. Um, and, yeah, as you mentioned already, Ali Brigginshaw's boot was on point. I think she she set up, I think, was it two tries in that same corner where she's kicked to yep. Stacey Walker? Um, and she was another one who, who got a double, who had a really good game. So Broncos have found some good form um, coming away with two wins after a slow start to the comp. Um, I feel a bit sorry for the Raiders. I feel like they're playing some good footy, but they're just coming away with, you know, um, unlucky to not get the result, which is just a shame for them. And shortly after we had our chat last week, the NRL announced that they were potentially thinking of having a fastest man and woman uh, race (laughs) at the grand final. Do you think Julia Robinson is one of those contenders for one of the fastest females in the NRLW? Yeah, she's pretty quick. I think she'd be in the mix for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that intercept try certainly showed that. But you're right about the Raiders. They certainly have the players there. And as you said, they have just been a little bit unlucky in games. Um, yep. But sure, they can get back to some form. The second game on Saturday was the Cowboys taking on the Titans up at Queensland Country Bank Stadium. And the Cowboys got that one via a Kira Dib field goal, 11 points to 10. Um, a crucial win for the Cowboys as well, their second one of the year. Yes, they're doing well um, up at their home um, in Townsville. I think they've been wanting to play all of their games up there. Yeah. Um, two from two. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was, a, it was a good kick there by Kira. I saw I caught that bit um, for her to get that field goal. They still had, like, five minutes to go. So it was a, probably a smart move by her to just take that um, one point there. I think I saw Lauren Brown have an attempt with about a minute to go. She wasn't too far from being in front of the goal, but she just swung it wide. And, um, yeah, I'm sure they're very disappointed with another loss after having a strong start to the season with two wins early. Um, but, yeah, now... Two losses in their last two games, which isn't ideal for them. Yeah, and we also we all know that Lauren Brown can kick a field goal. She did that for Queensland in Game Two of the State of Origin series this year in the wet, mind you. Yeah, uh, but unfortunately missed that one for the Titans on the weekend. Uh, Jakiah Whitfield as well. She scored a try. She broke the line. Um, 
Is she another contender for the fastest in the NRLW? Yeah, I think Chicago could be in there for sure as well. I forgot about her as well, but um, yeah, she's got some speed for sure. She'd be in the mix too. Yeah, so uh, certainly would be interesting there. And Sunday's games, the Dragons kicked it off against the Roosters down at Wynn Stadium where you were doing a bit of sideline commentary for the ABC. Um, the Roosters got away with that win, 28 points to 8, but it wasn't all smooth sailing for the Roosters because it was a pretty close game for the first, say, 20 minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, the Roosters have done that kind of twice in a row, really. Last round, they, they did the same slow start against the Tigers, um, but they found some good form towards the back end of the first half and then a solid second half there to come away with 28 points. But some really strong performances there. I think um, Isabel Kelly, she got a double and she's she had a massive game. I think she had 200 plus total run metres, but over 100 post-contact metres. So... She's doing a big job for her team there. And, um, yeah, if they can find a 70-minute performance, I can not be hard to beat. Yeah, for sure. Isabel Kelly, 269 run metres, three line breaks, two tries. So uh, definitely in form at the moment. The Roosters' captain. Uh, a little bit disappointing for the Dragons down at their home ground and after getting that win against the Cowboys the week before. Oh, sorry, the Newcastle Knights the week Knights. before, the Premiers. Yeah, so a little bit disappointing for them. How do you see their season at the moment? Yeah, no, I thought the same. I thought they would have come into this game feeling really confident. But to be honest, their um, their attack wasn't great. They looked really lateral. Um, they had some good individual performances, like Ray C. McGregor broke the line a couple of times. Yep. Um, so it was good to see her, you know, running the ball a bit more. And Tegan Berry was great as always. She just is a real um, big workhorse for them. She never gives up, and it was good to see her get over for a try. But I don't know, once they lost Ray, I think she, she went off for a HIA. Um, their attack just looked really flat, like they didn't really look too threatening. Um, Roosters seemed to just solve everything that they kind of threw at them. So hopefully they can find some um, some better attack next week if they're going to stay in this competition, really. That's right, and their next game is against the Cronulla Sharks, who are high-flying on the top of the ladder. Uh, and they were the yep. next game that happened on the weekend. They won their game 14 points to 12 over the Newcastle Knights at Points Bet Stadium. Uh, some uh, big injuries for the Newcastle Knights, most notably Jesse Southwell went off. Um, yep. with, so we wish her all the best in her recovery. She may not play this weekend, I don't think, but uh, the Sharks, they're yeah, high-flying on the top of the ladder at the moment. Yeah, no, they're finding some really good form. Um, what that's their fourth win in a row, so they'll be really confident going into next week against the Dragons. Um, the Knights, yeah, it's going to be a massive loss for them losing Jessie. I think she failed her HIA it was a category category one, um, so she'll miss next week. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they do there. But two losses now back to back for the Knights. They actually scored more tries than they did, um, sorry, than the Sharks did in that game. But um, Sharks got their kicks and they also got a penalty goal, which gave them that extra two points. So a close game. Um, we'll see how the Knights go next week. Yeah, they take on the Parramatta Eels. Uh, which, oh, I mean. <laughs> yes, so uh, they take on the Parramatta Eels, who featured in the last game of the round against the Tigers at Campbelltown Stadium and got away with that victory 12 points to 10. That was the late game yesterday. Uh, what did you think of Parramatta's performance and the game itself? Yeah, I actually missed that one. Um the 6 p.m. game they had last night. Hey, I missed that one, but it's good to see the Eels, again, like playing some really good footy. It was a close one in only being, what, a two-point victory, but I think the Tigers are struggling struggling big time. It's They're 0-4, and four, um, which is not, <laughs> not a good start to the season whatsoever, but, yeah, really happy for the Eels. Um, it was Kennedy Charrington's 25th game. I saw her cross the line, which is really good to see for her. Yeah. Um, and Abby Church was another one who, who had a, a massive game. She's just playing some really good footy. I think she's up the maybe second place on the Dally M um, table as well at the moment. So, yeah, Eels are doing really well. Yeah, no, it's good to see, especially after last season. Kennedy Charrington, 39 tackles, 186 run metres, one try. Um, the other couple of players that I've been impressed with are the centre, Rosie, uh, sorry, Rory 
uh, O'Brien, I think it is, and yep. also uh, Chloe Jackson in the second row as well. She made a couple of line breaks as well. So uh, yeah. she is a workhorse, I think, in the, in that back row position. Yeah, she's going really well. I'm pretty sure she was playing Harvey Norman a, a few weeks ago when I played against them, and she had a good game then as well. So it's good to see her getting a crack in the um, NRW. Yes, no, it is for sure. Well, to the ladder, and the Sharks are at the top of the ladder, four from four, then the Roosters, Eels, and Broncos. The Knights slip out of the top four. The Titans, Cowboys, Raiders, Dragons, and the Tigers are coming last, unfortunately, on the ladder. Uh, is it this time of year where uh, we're, four, we're four rounds in? It'll be round five next week. Is this the time of year that teams need to start winning games because it's only a top four semi-final series? Yeah, 100%. It's it's really hard with our seasons because they're so short, so you really can't be affording to uh, be losing like many games, especially this early. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting with, um, you know, almost halfway through the season already. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, uh, as he said, a short season, only a top four, so every win is crucial, that is for sure. Now, I've got a, a listener question uh, from one of your fans, actually, and she is a great supporter of uh, Women's Rugby League, and she was at the game, the Eels game last night as well. Uh uh, came through on Instagram, YTG with Nick, so little Nicola Weber, uh, yep. a great supporter. Um, now, her question for yourself was what, obviously, we've just spoken about the NRL this weekend. Uh, the Knights have lost two in a row. The Broncos seem to have regained some form. The Sharks are looking strong and para hold out the Tigers to stay in the top four. So, overall, what did you think of the NRLW this weekend? Yeah, I think I might have mentioned it last week. I think all the games are really like anybody's game. I don't think anyone's really stamped their mark on the competition as the, you know, the most dominant team sort of thing or a team that's definitely going to win it. Um, we've seen previously the Knights have been quite dominant throughout the round games. But, yeah, this, this year it's very different. I think um, there's probably a couple teams that aren't really in the mix of winning. Like you can see the Tigers obviously struggling. Um, but... Otherwise, like, yeah, every game is is up for grabs. It's anyone's game, so I, I like it. I think it's exciting. It makes um, it makes it exciting to watch. Yeah, definitely for sure. And just uh, I think we have mentioned it before as well. But the timings of the games uh, is that a little bit disappointing? The timings of the games uh, that are on because of the crowd figures that are getting to these games. I think they the NRL have tried to put in. Uh, a lot of double headers uh, with yep. the clubs that do have teams in both competitions, which is which is good. Um, but just the timing of these games, um, I don't know if there's an answer to that. What's your thoughts on that one? Yeah, for sure. With um, the Roosters Dragons game that I was at yesterday, that was perfect because the men were straight after. So they're getting um, you know by half time. There's a lot of people rolling in, being able to see some of the girls' games. But some of these other ones that are like. 11 a.m. on a Saturday, I just think it's so hard to get any interest because, again, people are running around at their own kids' sports or they might be playing themselves on a Saturday morning at that time. So, yeah, it's it's tricky. I don't know what the solution is. I'm pretty sure it's mainly because of the TV rights. Um, but, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what they do in in the future. That's it. That's it. Well, quickly looking to next week, round five, We've got the, uh, I'll just get your quick thoughts on this one and your quick tips on this one. Uh, we've got the Eels and the Knights uh, first up at Eric Tweedle Stadium. Uh, that'll be a, a big game, I think, th uh, third playing fi fifth at the moment. Yep. Um, I'd love to say para for you, but I think the Knights will know that they need to win it, um, especially after two, two losses. So I think the Knights might get up there. Yep. Uh, the next game is the Raiders taking on the Cowboys at GIA Stadium in Canberra at 12.45pm on Saturday. Yeah, I think um, I'm going to go with the Raiders, especially being down there at home. Um, and again, they're another team that know they need to find some form, so I think they'll be hard to beat at home. 
The next game on, or the first game on Sunday, the 25th of August, is sees the Gold Coast taking on the Roosters up there on the Gold Coast. This will be an interesting game because the Roosters are in form, the Titans are at home, um, and they will like their chances against the Roosters being at home. Yeah, for sure. I think um, the Roosters will be too strong, I think, personally. I think if they can just find a 70-minute performance, like I mentioned earlier, I think they'll beat most teams. So unless the Titans can pull it together, because they've obviously struggled the last couple of weeks, I think Roosters will, will get up there. The Tigers take on the Broncos uh, in the next game on Sunday, the middle game, 1.45pm at Leichhardt Oval. Yeah, I think the Broncos will be too strong there against the struggling Tigers team. Yeah, they're starting to slowly get on a roll, the Broncos, which is yep. scary to see. And the last game of the weekend sees the Dragons take on the Sharks, the local derby, down there at Wynn Stadium, 6.10pm. Yeah, I think that's going to be a really good game. I'm, I'm not sure who will get the win. I know the Sharks obviously are at the top. They'll be very confident um, after four wins in a row. But I know the Dragons... Um, they're a gritty team like they showed against the Knights last week. So I think it'll be a good game. I'm not sure who'll get that one. And what's your commentary schedule for this weekend? Um, I'll actually be down at that game. So okay. I'll be down at Wynn Stadium for the Sharks vs Dragons. Nice, nice. Well, Kiana Takarangi, thank you very much for joining me again for the weekly roundup of the NRLW. I really appreciate it and hope to catch you next Monday. Thanks, Troy. Hello, Paracave podcast listeners. My name is Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty and long-term sponsor of the Paracave podcast. If you're looking to sell your property or buy or just curious to know what your property is worth in today's market, give me a call today on 0421 588 445. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Paracade Podcast. See you next time.